Hey guys, today we will cover one of the most fundamental concepts in telecommunications called modulation. Modulation is a technology that is used in telecom networks all the time, all the time. But if you focus on conventional definitions of modulation from textbooks or internet, it's just not going to help you. If you focus on those definitions from textbooks and internet, you may always stay oblivious to the fact that modulation is in fact the very reason why you get high speeds on your mobile phones when you're using 4G or 5G networks. Now it's really easy for me to tell you right now what modulation is and finish this video right now, but it's just not going to be fun for me and I also want to have some fun. So what I'm going to do is that I'll take you through the traditional definitions of modulation just so you can appreciate what I'm about to tell you later in this video. The traditional definition of modulation is something like this. Modulation is the process of changing the properties of a carrier signal in line with the modulating signal to be able to transmit the information over a telecom network. Now the definitions you hear will be something along these lines and in some cases you may even hear words like uh, baseband signal, information signal and sometimes you may hear terms like frequency, amplitude and phase. Now in case you don't know there's also an analogy used in telecom networks to explain the concept of modulation. Now that analogy involves rock and paper. So it's not rock, paper, scissors. It's just rock and paper where rock is considered the carrier signal to carry the information and the paper is basically representing the information. So let me demonstrate it to you right now. So here's the analogy. So let's say you have a piece of paper which is representing data or information and this is paper, right? So if I want to send it somewhere, let's say I send it over there. I throw it in the air, it's just gonna fly and it's just not gonna get anywhere because it's just too light. And if I, however, use the carrier, the rock, and wrap this piece of paper around it, it has a better chance of getting somewhere. Now, let me show it to you. Okay, so I now have this paper and let's say I wrap it around this piece of rock. So I do this. Now if I throw it somewhere, it's just going to go there straight away like this. I'm not gonna throw it now, but it can, right? Because it's heavier now. What this analogy is telling us is that uh, if you have an information signal, which is weak, you cannot send it directly anywhere. However, if you put it inside a carrier signal, it has a better chance of getting somewhere. Now this rock and paper analogy is great if you wanted to explain the concept to a child or maybe to a friend, or even for your own understanding. But if you're in a job interview, you don't want to use this analogy because it's just going to be, well, embarrassing, right? I mean, can you imagine a fully grown up engineer going to a job interview and talking about rock and paper in a highly technical environment? So if you keep watching this video, I'll hopefully give you something better than rock and paper to talk about when you go to a job interview and they ask you what modulation is. The best way to approach any technology concept is to always ask the why question. So why do you need to know this thing and where is it used in the network? Modulation is used in mobile networks in two different ways. The first way is the most common use case while the other one is a highly advanced use case. The first one is analog modulation, and the second one is digital modulation. Now, even though mobile networks are digital nowadays, we still use both analog and digital modulation schemes in mobile networks. The first one is basically when your mobile phone is connected to the base station. At this point, analog modulation is happening, which is the only way for your phone to communicate with the base station. If it wasn't for this analog modulation, your phone won't be able to communicate at all with the base station. The second one is digital modulation and it happens when the communication is within the phone or base station. So basically when the communication is no longer in the air, but inside the network nodes or the devices. That is where digital modulation takes place. Digital modulation consists of technologies like PSK, FSK, QPSK, and QAM, etc. Unlike analog modulation that focuses on the transmission between the base station and the mobile phone, digital modulation is about the efficiency of the mobile network. 
it gives your phone the ability to extract much higher bit rates from the existing mobile network. So the digital modulation techniques allow the network to use the radio network resources much more efficiently. Now I'm sure you'll find this a bit strange and you may not expect me to say that, but modulation in many ways is like a relationship. So it's a relationship between two signals which are happily single and then they're kind of forced to uh, get together so that communication can take place. In this relationship you have two signals, so you have the carrier signal and then you have the information signal. So the carrier signal is very strong, it has a big reach, it can go anywhere, but it does not really have any messages, it doesn't have any information, it cannot really talk, it can convey the messages, but it doesn't have anything to say. On the other hand, you have this information signal, which is full of information. It's the pinnacle of information. It's got all the information in the world. However, it doesn't have the reach. So in order to reach somewhere, it has to rely on someone. So it looks like the perfect match, right? So you have the information with one signal, and then you have the ability to reach somewhere coming from the other signal. You put them together, and bam, you have modulation. The term modulation means modifying, which raises a question as to what is being modified. So modify or change, right? Change is the other word for modifying. So what is happening here in modulation is that you're changing the carrier signal. So the two signals we talked about earlier, right? So you have a talking signal, which is the information signal, and then you have this carrier signal, which does all the hard work. Unfortunately, or fortunately, in this relationship, uh, the carrier signal is the one that has to go through all the changes just so it can accommodate the information coming from the information signal. So basically what you do is that you change the properties or qualities of this poor carrier signal. You, change, you can change basically the amplitude, you can change the frequency, you can change the phase, and you do that so that you can fit in all the information from the information signal and then you combine them together so that they can communicate or they can uh, travel through the radio interface to be able to communicate. The carrier signal is modified or changed to accommodate the actual information so that the modified signal or modulated signal can be transmitted wirelessly through the air. So if you look at your screen now, you will see three waveforms in this picture. So the top picture is the carrier signal, which is very circular and round looking. So this is an analog signal and analog signals usually look very smooth and kind of round and kind of circular and they're very continuous, right? They're also called continuous signals. So that's the analog signal, right? That's the carrier one. So this is the one which will be transmitted into the air, okay? So that's the one. Then the second one is the waveform, which is data or information. So as you can see, it's very different from the top one. This is kind of rectangular, and this is digital data or digital information. So this is the one that will be used to modulate the carrier signal. And finally, the last picture is of the modulated or modified signal. As you can see, this one looks like a combination of the first two. So this is a cross between the first two. So this is the modulated signal that can be transmitted into the air to carry information. The changes that a carrier signal goes through can be related to any of its characteristics, such as amplitude, so the height, frequency, so the number of cycles per second, and phase, so the angle or tilt. So this waveform example that you're looking at right now on your screen is for amplitude shift keying or ASK where the amplitude of the carrier signal has been modified. The term shift keying just means basically that the digital information has been used to modulate an analog signal. Now just to summarize, let's have a look at the formal definition of modulation now and I'm sure you'll understand every single bit of it. Modulation is the process of encoding the information signal, data, with the carrier signal to transmit the data securely, efficiently, and effectively without interference. It involves making changes to the carrier signal's characteristics such as amplitude, frequency, and phase in line with the information signal or data. Now, in terms of where in real life you see modulation, Let's have a look at some examples to see where you see analog modulation and where you see digital modulation. When you're on a phone call and your phone is getting the mobile signal from a nearby base station, 
Analog modulation is happening all the time in the base station and inside your mobile phone. So in the downlink signal, when the base station sends communication to your phone, it modulates the signal before releasing it from the base station. That way, the information is wrapped inside the carrier signal. Once the communication is received by your mobile phone, the exact opposite of modulation, demodulation, takes place to separate the information from the carrier signal. The same process takes place for uplink communication also when your phone is sending to the base station. But this is analog modulation, which is essential and without it, you cannot use radio waves to communicate any data at all. In analog modulation, an analog carrier signal is modulated by an analog information signal. So both signals are analog. Now you may be wondering, mobile networks nowadays are digital, so why are we using analog modulation? It's a very good question. So as soon as any communication comes out of your devices and goes out into the air, it has to be converted into analog signals because radio waves are analog and this physical world that we live in is also analog. Base stations have digital to analog converters that convert the signal into analog before releasing it into the air. The mobile phones have analog to digital converters to be able to pick up the analog signal and convert the signal back into digital. So while analog modulation means modulating analog data with an analog carrier signal, digital modulation means modulating digital data with analog signal. Now to help you understand the beauty of digital modulation, let's have a look at an example from GPRS networks. GPRS is a technology used by 2G GSM networks to give your phone the ability to access mobile internet. Now, when GPRS was introduced, it could only offer a maximum data rate of 171.2 kilobits per second, which is quite low. So to upgrade that, they introduced Edge Evolved Data for Global Evolution, which used a digital modulation technique called 8PSK, or octagonal phase shift keying. 8PSK tripled the data rates of GPRS. And do you know how? Well, because 8PSK was more efficient. So this is the value of digital modulation techniques. They are efficient and they are able to extract much higher bit rates from the available radio network resources. And finally, just so you know, some of the basic digital modulation techniques are ASK amplitude shift keying, PSK phase shift keying, and FSK frequency shift keying. The advanced digital modulation techniques that are used in 4G LTE networks are QPSK, quadrature phase shift keying, and QAM, quadrature amplitude modulation. Thanks for watching the video guys. I've written a very detailed post on this topic. Have a look at the link in the description below.